solution where every knee bows down where every answer found solution and answer where every question found answer Lord in your presence Father we thank you for being here for you promise that wherever two or three will get in your name you will be among them thank you for being here this morning we are bringing our questions, our problems, our issues before you, Lord. You never get tired of us, O Lamb of God. The Bible says your goodness are renewed every morning. Thank you for renewing them for us this morning. And thank you for speaking to us. Let us disappear, Lord. Arise and speak to these people. They did not come to listen to a man. They did not come to receive human wisdom. They came to receive divine wisdom. Lord, let us just be simple instruments, canal that you're going to use to release life to your people. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we bind every contrary spirit and we command them to leave this place in the name of Jesus so that you alone be reigned. Jesus mighty name we pray and we say Amen God bless you may have a seat thank you thank you for coming God bless you we appreciate your presence thank you for leaving your comfortable bed so early on a Sunday morning and to come to see the face of the Lord and to spend time in the presence of God I believe that this is not going to be for granted. The Lord is going to capitalize it for you and bless you. Come with me in the book of uh, Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. Luke chapter 17, verse 11 to 19. And then we will jump to Psalm 95, verse 2. And the last one will be the first Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18 to 19. So those are the main scriptures we're going to use this morning to share what God put in our hearts so that we can share with you. And I would, I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of you who have uh, sent me kind messages and wishes on my birthday. Thank you very much. I received people, many people, there are even people that I did not answer, but remember, I did read that. And uh, I'm so grateful for all your messages it went straight to my heart. I am so grateful. So, Luke chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible says, Now, on his way to Jerusalem, Yeshua traveled along the border between Samaria and Galilee. As he was going into a village, ten men who had leprosy met him. They stood at a distance and called out in a loud voice, Yeshua, Master, have pity on us. When he saw them, he said, to, he said, Go, show yourself to the priest. And as they went, they were cleansed, or they were healed. One of them, out of the ten, when he saw he was healed, came back, praising God in a loud voice. He threw himself at Jesus' feet, and thanked him. And he was a Samaritan. Yeshua asked, Were not all ten cleansed or healed? Where are the other nine? Where are the other nine? Were they not all blessed? Were they not all saved? Were they not all given back the breath of life? Were they not all alive this morning? Were they not in good health today? Were they not all of them received the grace of God? Where are them to come back and be grateful to the Lord? Come with me in the book of Psalm 95, verse 2. Psalm 95, verse 2. <clears throat> Psalm 95, verse 2. The Bible says, let us come before him with thanksgiving 
and extol with music and song. First Thessalonians chapter 5. That's a good exercise there. Eh? For those who, who don't read the Bible, at least today you're going to page your, your Bible and see all the beautiful books that the Bible contains. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. The Bible says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. My message this morning is titled, Be Grateful. Do you mind with all the due respect to your neighbor? Be grateful. Be grateful. Beloved, this world, few of us are still grateful. Many of us, we are always complaining. When we open our eyes, the first thing we complain is too hot. It's too cold. I did not sleep well. This house, my husband, my children. You know, we always find a reason to complain. We complain, I'm my skin, I'm too dark. We complain, I am too light. We complain, I'm too tall. I'm too short. I'm too fat. I'm too slender. We always find something to complain about. We always find something to complain about. Whereas, if we look very well, our lives are full of things for which we should be thankful. Thankful to God and thankful to people who are around us. Because remember, God can only bless you through people. God is not going to come and bless you like that. He will use people to bless you. So when you are thankful to God, you must do it through people that have availed themselves to do you good. Amen. Thankful to your husband. Thankful to your wife. Thankful to your children. Thankful to your pastor. Thankful to your neighbor. Thankful to people around you, your boss. Thankful to people around you. There are many things that you have received that you should be thankful about. Amen. This scripture that we just read now in the book of Luke chapter 17, the Bible says there was 10 people with leprosy. And as you know, in the old time, this kind of disease was an incredible disease. <coughs> it's this amputating disease that will start amputating your, your, your extremities, your fingers, your toes, until you're going to die. And that sickness was so contagious that if you contract it, they wouldn't like you to be among people. So they will, they will make you to go outside the city and there until you're going to die. And the Bible said 10 of them, because they were not living alone, they were living in a group of people. So 10 of them, they saw Jesus from far. And then the Bible said they screamed with a loud voice. Well done. When you're screaming to Jesus, you must scream with a loud voice. Amen. I don't mean a physical loud voice. I mean the loud voice of your heart. Amen. You must scream, pray in the way that the Lord shall be attracted by your prayer. So they did well. They screamed to him. They said, son of David, do something to us. Then he stopped. He told them, you can go and show yourself to the priest. Because the, the law was, if you are healed, you must go to the priest. So that the priest may certify it and give you a letter. And say so that you are healed and you can go back to the city. So as the Bible said, they were on their way to the priest, they were healed. Remember, that sickness was a sickness we have wounds everywhere on the feet and they're going up. So as they were walking... As they were obedient to God, every obedience to God is linked to a blessing. Yeah. Let me say it again. Every obedience to God is linked to a bless blessing. Yeah. When you obey God, you are blessed. Yeah. When you obey God, you are opening yourself to the blessing of the Lord. Yeah. When you obey the Lord, you are opening yourself to the exercise of the ministry of angels. Yeah. Angels will avail themselves to come to you when you obey God. And the Bible says, as they obey the word of Jesus to go, and uh, present themselves to the priest, they were healed. I believe most of them they didn't go back to the priest because they have proof of their healing. All their extremities were healed. All their wounds were dry. Everything came back normal. So they were so taken in the joy that they went out and started screaming and enjoying. God does not, does not stop us from enjoying when something good happened to us. When you are blessed, when you have something good, you can enjoy, you can rejoice. God is not against that. But God would like you to do one thing. The Bible says, among the ten who were healed, one of them suddenly remember in his joy, he remembered, oh, this one I did not get it by myself. It was given to
to me by somebody. Let me, before me going to enjoy and tell my entire family, let me go back to him and be grateful. He went back at the feet of Jesus. The Bible said he was coming back with loud song of joy. You see what you did this morning? When you are singing the song and you are, praising, you are celebrating the Lord, this is what God likes. He likes when he does something in your life, you must praise him in a way that people ask you, what has happened here? So that you can tell them that the Lord has done it again. Amen. So he was praising God. He ran to, to, to Jesus. And the Bible said he went at his feet. And he said, I am grateful. Thank you. Then Jesus was amazed. He looked at him and he asked his disciples. There were ten when they came to seek for help. But now, for them to come and be grateful, there is only one. You see, when we are here and we say, well, come, we are fasting. We are going to pray for our problem. Many people are coming here. You'll see even people don't see in church. Or those who only come once in church. You'll see them that day as we are, we are seeking the face of the Lord. They will be here, seeking the face of the Lord. But when God does something in our life, few of us come back here to say thank you to the Lord. Come back here to sit and give praise to God. I thank God for what He's done. You know, sometimes when God does things in our life, we take it for granted. We, we see it. When it is done already, we see it as something that was meant to happen. Our problem, when something is not, when you're not yet healed, you feel that, oh, it is impossible. But when it is, when, once it is done, you think that, oh, it was meant to happen. So you feel like there's no need for me to go back to the Lord. Or when we go back to the Lord, we don't go with the same you know, determination that we, we went to him when we were seeking for that thing. What I like in the scripture, the Bible says, when they were asking Jesus, they screamed with a loud voice. And this gentleman, when he came back to Jesus to say thank you, the Bible says, he came back also with a loud voice. He was singing with a loud voice. He came running and uh, he has the same energy. You see, when you seek for something from God, you can fast, you can pray. How many people are fasting to say thank you to the Lord when where, what you've been looking, what you've been seeking have been given to you? How many people among us can also fast three days for that problem that you fasted three days and when the Lord has done it, you come back and say, I'm going to fast three more days only to say thank you to the Lord. Usually, when it is done, we just say thank you Jesus and we go. We go and rejoice. We go and enjoy. We are forgetting that we need to be thankful to the Lord. We need to be grateful to the Lord. What is gratefulness or to be grateful? Gratefulness is that feeling. It is that showing of appreciation for something that has been done to you or something that you have received. It is to show appreciation for something that has been done to you. Not that you did to yourself, that somebody did it to you. Then you show appreciation. That appreciation, you are giving it to somebody for the benefit that you have received from that person. And gratefulness is that contentment. Very soon I'm going to speak about this word contentment. That pleasure that you get in your heart to go back and to say that uh, I am appreciating what you've done. I appreciate. You know, I remember a friend told me once, ah, people are so ungrateful. So what happened again? He said, I sent this guy $50. When he received the $50, before him to receive, they were sending me so many match messages. Please, please, please help me, help me, help me. And when I sent him the $50, then quiet, no movement anymore. And then I called him. I said, did you receive the money that I sent you? And then the gentleman said, yeah, I received it, but it was only 50. Mm. Wow. Mm. Look at how people are so ungrateful. You don't even know where that 50 came from. You don't even know how, much, how many sacrifices that gentleman has done to deprive himself for that 50 for him to release it to you. You don't know how obedient this person has been to God who has told him, give that 50. 
receive it, you don't even appreciate the 50. Our problem is, we ask for five. When we get it, we are thinking of ten. But you've asked for five. Not the five is in your hand. Then you're like, oh, I could have asked for ten. Don't you want to give me ten? Instead of starting on me, oh, I am grateful for the fact that you've given me. Many of us here, we don't say thank you. Because we think that we deserve what we receive. We don't say thank you. But God wants us this morning to be grateful. Just like this one gentleman we have in the process and came back to Jesus to say thank you to him. How often do you go back to those who are doing good to you and be grateful to them and say thank you? No matter how small you can think what they've given to you, but you don't know, brothers and sisters, to receive is so easy. To remove something from you to give to somebody else is not always easy. To mine up from yourself, from what you have, from the batch that you have, to give it to somebody else is not always easy, my brother. Even those who have more, I thought that if you have more, you can release easily. It's not, it's not obvious. It's not obvious. That's why you are seeing me, your name, you know, they want more. They want more. Why they want more? Because it is a grace for you to be grateful for what you already have. Hallelujah. <laughs> so what should motivate our gratefulness? What should motivate our gratefulness? The first thing that should motivate you to be grateful, you need to understand that whatever you have has been given to you. Well, let me say that again. Whatever you have, I've been given to you. Now, for sure, you're looking at me, Pastor. Come on. My salary, I earn it. I work hard. I went to school first of all. I sent the CVs around. I went to interview. And then I got that interview. And I'm working hard. Every Monday to Friday, I go to work. I labor. I toil. And then that is my salary. I got it by myself. <laughs> Let me show you something. Come with me. In the book of 1 Corinthians, Chapter 4, verse 7. First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. I want you and me to read this scripture and I want it to sink deeply in your heart and to be there for you to understand that whatever you have has been only given to you. There is nothing that you have that you deserve. It is just a gift that you receive from God. The Bible says in the book of First Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians 4, 7. For who makes you different from anyone else? That's a question. What do you have that you did not receive? <coughs> what do you have that you did not receive? And my version they say, and if you did receive it, why do you boost as though you did, it, you did not receive it? Beloved, there are people that you attended school together. They were even more intelligent than you, more qualified than you. They did not get the job that you got. And even where you are working, there are people who are laboring more than you. They don't get what you are getting. So what you got in your hand is only a grace that you receive from God. So what will motivate you to be grateful is the knowledge that whatever I have is just a blessing from the Lord. The good health that you have, you did not, you did not do anything to receive that. People think that you know me, I have a medical aid, you know, I go and see the doctor all the time, I go and I do my checkup, I eat well, I gym, and whatever. Who, re who remember Mark Vision for it? For those who know football, Martin John Foway was one of the footballers, I think, from, from, from Cameroon. That gentleman, he was very fit, very fit. And he had a heart attack in the soccer field. Despite him so much fit, he had a heart attack, and the heart attack killed him. He died. He was so fit, no fat, nothing. He was able to jump. You know, I was training every day. But that day, the owner of the breath decided I'm going to take what is mine. He decided to take it. Nobody could stop him. His fitness could not prevent him to die. Beloved, the breath of life that you are having this morning has been given to you by the Lord. Amen. He has decided to renew it to you. You know, if you, if you, you Google it, the Gentlemen with apple. 
the cancer of the liver. He killed him. Despite his money. What I'm trying to say here, I'm trying to say that what you have has been given to you by God. Amen. Even the breath of life. Yes. People are so, I, know, I have a nice body. I have a nice body. That body has been given to you by God. Yes. I've seen people who are going to the gym. Gym means everything to have a good line. The good lines are not coming. There are people who don't go to gym, they have a nice body. They're asking, is it because it's just a grant that you receive from the Lord? Amen. Don't boost like you got it from yourself. Yes, you go every morning to, to toil, to work in your errands, but the breath of life that you are having is coming from the Lord. Amen. There are people that slept well yesterday, and when the worker wakes up in the morning, the knees are painful, the joints are painful. He cannot stand, he cannot go and do his job. Why? Because the owner of the breath has decided otherwise. I've heard people dying on their sleep. Somebody slept very well. This woman was saying, we slept with my husband who was sleeping next to me. And then there is a moment I realized that the time for him to wake up, to go and do his preparation for work, is alive and is moved the husband, gone. The owner of breath has taken it. Beloved, there is nothing that you have in your hand that you never receive. Even my salary, yes, it's coming from God. Therefore, you need to be grateful. Amen. There are certain companies here in South Africa. People are working, but they're not getting paid. So if you, you are getting paid, it is the grace of God. They are busy at CCMA, toy, toy. Hey, nothing is happening. So if your salary is coming every month, it is the grace of God. Amen. I remember a couple of years ago, I was expecting salary. And it did not come in the month. You know, I, don't, I can't tell you what happened to me. He did not come. Then I realized it is God if it is coming. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. So the first thing that should motivate you, it is because whatever you have, you receive it from the Lord. The second thing that should motivate you to be grateful. For you to be grateful, you need to have something that is called contentment. If a man of contentment, a man who should be happy with what you have now, there are people who have never been happy with what they have. He's not happy about his face, he's not happy about his nose, he's not happy about his eyes, he wants to go and do a person from the nose, he wants to do a person from the ears, he wants to do, he wants always to look like the neighbor, he wants always to look like somebody else. Be happy, be content with God has given you. Be content with what God has given you. You see, there is a say in my language, the house you don't sleep, you don't know where it is leaking during the night. Mm -hmm. It is not because you are seeing me laughing that you think that my pain is lesser than yours. Mm -hmm. If I remove my shoes and I put you into it, maybe you will collapse. Mm -hmm. So be grateful with what you already have. Be content. Mm -hmm. Content is a being happy, being satisfied with what you have now. Now. When I speak about contentment, I'm not saying that I'm not saying that you should not aim for better. You should not aim for something greater or something bigger. But before you to reach that something bigger, start by being happy with what you have now. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 6, Apostle Paul is saying to Timothy that holiness with contentment is a great source of gain, is a great source of benefit. Many Christians were not content. That's why lack of contentment produced jealousy. And we know when jealousy is there, what it will, it will bring. Jealousy always will make you to bring hatred. You have hatred. You hate people because you're jealous of them. Because you can't get what they have and you become envy. You see, those three people that are always together, triplets. Where there is jealousy, there will always be anger. Because what you don't get, you will be, and then you'll always hate the person. Yeah. You know why you hate your neighbor? Because you are jealous. You know why you are jealous? Because you are not content with what you have. Yeah. You always think it's too little, it's too small. But start by being happy with the small, then God will give you the greater. Yeah. If you are never to be happy with what you have, even when God will give you what you're thinking that you need, when you get in and find somebody else more than you, the very 
same feeling within your heart. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Be grateful of what you have. Be grateful of your body. Be grateful of your skin color. Be grateful. Be grateful. Let me tell you, no matter how ugly you can be like me, there will always be somebody who will like you. Amen. No matter how dark I am, there's a woman who will like me. Amen. Even if you don't like me, even if every other woman is not like me, but this beautiful woman, that me with my So be happy with what you have. There is somebody that will enjoy you the way you are. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. You know, one day, somebody that I know said that I got a woman. That if my wife said, praise God, bring that woman to us. When we used to talk with the gentleman, he used to give us a very high standard of women that you are. <laughs> now that day, he brought a woman. Looked with my wife. Jesus. <laughs> color and beauty, you cannot, you know, discuss about it. What is beautiful for you is not necessarily beautiful for you. What is good for you is not necessarily good for me. What is nice for you is not nice for me. Therefore, be content. Somebody will be okay with that nose of you. Somebody will be okay with that skin color of you. Somebody will be okay with your height. Somebody will be okay with whatever you have. He will be okay with that. You ask yourself, why is he following that you don't know? It's because beauty and color you can't discuss about it. Be content. You see, if you are content, it will produce in you thankfulness. Amen. Father, I thank you for what I have already. I thank you because I'm walking by thick law. But I trust you for a car. So if I see my brother with a car, I say, wow, beautiful car, God bless you. But I'm thankful. And it's not going to do anything to me. You need to see, when you start having pain, when you see your brother being blessed, you must come for prayer. Because it is a beginning of problem in your life. Yeah. When you are able to say congratulations to your brother, because he has made it in a certain area of life, there's a problem with you. You are not content. Jealousy starts by not being content with what you have. You're not happy with what you have. You're not happy with the life that you're living. Be happy with your life that you're living. No matter how small it is, tell the Lord, I'm happy with this little life. But I know, Lord, you're going to catapult me to the next level. But before that, I'm going to fully enjoy this time. If I'm not living on a mattress, I'm, living, I'm sleeping on a, on, on, a, on a mat, Lord, I will praise you as I'm sleeping yet on the mat. Amen. I'm sleeping yet on the mat, mm. but I will praise you as I'm sleeping here. Amen. And if a brother lives in a bed, I'm not going to be jealous. I'll praise the Lord and say, oh, God bless you. It is your time. Amen. The Bible says that it's time for everything. Your time will come. But the problem, you can be the witchcraft of your own, li own life because you are delaying your time by not being content. Remember, God sees our heart. He sees what we think. He sees how we feel. He sees what we have. So if you are not content, you can't say thank you to the Lord. What prevents you to say to thank the Lord is because you are not content. You are not happy. You are not satisfied with that nose. With that, every time when you go in, no. Father, I thank you for my long nose. I thank you for my heart. How many people are thanking God for what they have? You always see what you don't have. What you have, you don't see. Hallelujah. The other thing that will help you, that will help you to, that will motivate you to be grateful to the Lord is when you count the goodness of the Lord in your life. The Bible says in the book of Psalm, chapter 9, verse 1 to 2. I don't know if you have the version Darby. The version Darby, I like it because it says, count the goodness of the Lord. Count them. Stop counting what you don't have yet. Start by counting what you have. I thank God I have the breath of life. I thank God I have a good health. I thank God I have a job. If you start counting what you have, you'll see how many you do have. He's here, he said, I will praise you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. In the version of David, they say, I will count all your wonders. 
So when you have been telling, when you are telling what are you doing? When you are telling, you are saying, one, you did this, two, you did this, three, you did you are, you are telling you are, and he said, you are counting. Count what the Lord has done in your life. Can you count? Count what the Lord has done in your life. Your problem is you don't count, you only focus on what you don't have yet. And I'm insisting on the word yet. You don't have yet those things. Like, I don't have, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this, I don't have this. Can, can you please start by, I have this, I have this, I have this, I have this, then I will have that, and that, and that. Why you always start by what you don't have? Why can't you start counting what, what God has given you? You are eating. The people are not eating. You have a shelter. The people don't have a shelter. Place to sleep. You are having nice clothes. The people don't have that. What you have, you are you are accessing school. You are attending school. There are people who don't have school because the parent cannot afford to pay them the school fees. You are you are having a job. You are getting a salary. The people are working. They don't have salary. Why can't you start by count? You see, when you start counting what the Lord has done with you, you will see how many there are, and then you it will raise up thanksgiving from your heart. Stop counting what you don't have. Count what you have. There are people that are so focused on what they don't have. Humility is another thing that will help you to, it will motivate you. You know, humility is that attitude of your heart to accept that there are people above you that are helping you. So if you have that humility, it will have lead you to be grateful to those who are doing good to you. Hallelujah. Now why should you be thankful? Why should you be grateful? Why? The first reason why you should be grateful, my brother, it is because it is an order from the Lord. God wants you to be grateful. As I said it from the beginning, you do not going to be grateful only to God. God is not blessing you by himself. God uses people to bless you. Be grateful to God through those people who are blessing you. Be grateful to God through people who are blessing you. If it's your husband who has given you something, you know there are women who think that, ah, it's my husband, there's no need to say thank you. That is his duty. There are husbands who also know their duty, but they don't do those duty. So if your husband has given you something, don't just say, ah, once in a while, be grateful. Amen. Gratefulness will motivate him to do more. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Be grateful. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. There is something special there. The Bible says, we should, 1 Thessalonians, let's go quickly there, if you have your Bible. <clears throat> and here, we are learning that we should not only be grateful to the Lord for the good, but we should be grateful to the Lord even for the adversities that happen in our life. People, they only, they're only only thanking God when everything is nice. But when it's sour, it doesn't thank God. How can I thank God when things are sour? It is an order. God said, thank him. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 18. Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. Give thanks in all circumstances. We will give thanks if your salary did not come in. We will give thanks if you did not eat. Father, I thank you today I did not eat. I'm going to sleep hungry today. And my tummy will be doing the whole night. I thank you, God. Few people can thank God for that. If it was you and me, when something like this happened, we're going to cry all night, Father. You've abandoned me, Lord. Sometimes God will abandon you like that. <laughs> For you to learn to thank him in all the circumstances. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus thanks God when he was going to the cross. He thanked God. So all circumstances here, when they say all circumstances, it's not only good circumstances. There are circumstances that are going to happen in our lives. They're not going to be favorable. They're going to be difficult. But God said that we should be thankful. But I thank you. You know, there is something that is called in the Bible, sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice of praise. Remember I told you about 
the three giving. And one of them is sacrifice. Sacrifice is a giving that God comes and imposes to you. He'll tell you, give me something. And sometimes, and most of the time, rather I rather say, most of the time when it's a sacrifice, it is something that's going to be painful. Remember to Abraham, he said, give me your son, Isaac. To you, he can come and say, give me that car. Wow, this beautiful car that I like so much. He said, give it to me. And it is painful. It is bad. He said that when you are given that sacrifice in the pain, he said you should raise up a praise to the Lord. Father, I bless you because you are taking the most important thing from my life. You are taking my job. I give you praise. Who can give praise to God? A person who gives praise to God, who gives a sacrifice of praise, is a person who understood that he is only the steward of everything that he received from God. So if God decides to take it, it's fine. If God decides to take my life, it's fine. If God decides to take anything from me, I will give him praise because I am only a steward. If you don't understand that you are a steward and you think that you are the owner of what you have, then you will hustle with God. You will fight with God. You say, no God, don't take it. God, don't take it. Because you think that it is yours. But if you understand that everything which is in your hand, you receive it from God. If God requests it, you do it. It's like you have your own banker. And then you call your own banker, please pay this person. And your banker starts fighting with you. No, don't pay it. But it's my money. Pay it. Why are you feeling pain? A banker does not feel pain to transfer your money to whoever you want. He does nothing to him. Even if you decide to empty your account, he does nothing to him because it is not his money. Hallelujah. Amen. I think I said this once here. One pastor one day decided to check how people care about other people. He said, the offering of today is going to be given in a special manner. Your offering, you'll get it from the pocket of your neighbor. You just put your hand in the, uh, your neighbor's pocket and first take whatever amount and give for offering. People, they didn't care. They give a lot of amount because you'll open somebody's purse, he doesn't even care. You're just going to take it because it's not his money. But if it is you, they say, give with your own, you start calculating. Let me look for the, you know, the small note. You know, there are even people they are having eyes in their fingers. When you can put his hand in the pocket, when you are, you are singing for, for giving offering, he's removing this one, 100 hands, not this one. This one, 200 hands. The eyes are having the finger. I mean, the finger are having the eyes. And this is why this one is 20 rand. No, 10 rand. I pray today God must confuse those eyes in the name of Jesus. <laughs> so that as you are counting, you'll go to the big ones. I'm kidding. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, you need to understand when it is somebody, something that belongs to the neighbor, some, sometimes we release it without any problem. Because we believe that it's not mine. But what you have does not belong to you, belong to God. Why to release it is a problem with you. Hallelujah. So be thankful to the Lord for everything, good and bad. When it happens to you, thank God. Let God see that uh, you are depending completely on Him. Why should we be grateful to the Lord? We should be grateful to the Lord because gratefulness to the Lord keeps our heart in peace. Amen. If you are grateful to the Lord, your heart Come with me. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Philippians chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 to 7. Here's what the Bible says. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, with Thanksgiving with Thanksgiving with Thanksgiving present your request to God. So as you're presenting your request to God, you must in that request there must already be Thanksgiving. Say thank you, Jesus. Right? Now look what will happen.
medication. There are people who cannot sleep if they don't take medication. We have seen rich people, for them to sleep, they must receive propofol. You know propofol is that anesthesia that you give in theater. They must give him that for him to sleep. He has money, but he can't sleep. You know why? Because he is not content with what he has. He does not have thankfulness. You need, when you are thankful to the Lord, Father, I thank you for the day. It was a busy day, typical day, but I'm alive. Amen. Lord, let me thank you. I'm going to sleep now. God will give you a peaceful night. Amen. But if you start by, oh God, this day was so difficult. I love this. I did not get this. They didn't need this. They didn't need that. They didn't need that. At the end of the day, you will not go to sleep because you'll be thinking about all the bad that they did for you or they did to you. Change it now. All the bad that they did to me, Father, I thank you. Because the Bible says, what can happen to me if you don't allow it? The Bible says from him comes good and evil. There is nothing that can happen to your life if God does not allow it. Therefore, thank him whatever happened. Because he knows. He is a good father. I will never allow anything bad to happen to my children. When I take them to the hospital, I check that what they do to them is a good thing. So when they bring them, my son may think that, oh, Papa is allowing me to be pricked. But I know, after that pricking, something good will come. Hallelujah. So if God is allowing you to go through adversity, through pain and difficulties, he knows what he's doing. You just be for three days we haven't eaten. Thank God. I thank you. How will you know how it feels to spend three, three days without eating? Have you never spent the whole day without eating? That you are going to sleep now and you haven't eaten. And then there is no hope of eating that night. That you drink water as you are walking or singing dum, 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 water. Have you never happened to you? If it hasn't happened to you, you won't understand your brother when he's that situation. Sometimes God will allow you to go there so that you may understand other people, so that you may be compassionate about other people. When you see, you say, no, I know what, how it feels. I don't want him to go through that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. To me, why should we be grateful? We should be grateful because it is a sign of contentment and trust in God. When somebody raises up his hand and says, Lord, I, I give you praise, I'm grateful, it is showing that the person, he is content and he is a trusting God. Trusting God. Now, let me learn. Why people are not thankful? People are not thankful, are not grateful, because they think that what they have, they've got it by their own strength. Very wrong. You got it by God's grace. Amen. Because you think that you deserve what you get, therefore you don't need to thank anybody. You think that whatever God does, I deserve it. So I don't need to thank anybody. The, 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 this marriage is because I'm too much beautiful. Look at the kind of beautiful woman I have. Can you see my cap? I got it because I'm so beautiful. You will suffer. I got it because I'm working so hard. That's why you're not thankful. If you understood that what you got is just by grace, you will be grateful. People are not grateful because they are so much focused on their actual problem and pain. People are so much focused on what they are going through that their eyes are closed on the good that is happening. If you have the breath of life, if you have the breath of life, it means that it is not yet finished with you. It means that God is not yet done with you. Amen. If God was done with you, he would have killed you last night. If he allowed you to be alive again this morning, it is because God is not yet done with you. He is, he is not yet done with you. He still has things to do with you. That's why he renewed the breath of life. I'm old. I'm this age. I'm this age. If you were age enough, God would have killed you. If you are still alive, Bible said, for those who are alive, they still hope. For those who are alive, there's still hope. There's still hope for you, my brother. There's still hope for you. So stop focusing on all the pain that you're going through. There are other things that are happening around you that you should be focused on. People are not grateful to the Lord because they believe their situation is the worst 
They feel that what they are going through, nobody never been through this session in the church. Every time you come to him, you are giving him the word of exhortation. He will listen to you with the hand on the, on the cheek. Listen to you and say, Pastor, it is because it is not you. If you were in my situation, maybe you would have. Oh my God. Somebody told me that, Pastor, it's because it's not you. You don't know what the pastor can do. When we, sometimes we come to preach here when our hearts bleed. We did not eat, but we preach. Hallelujah. Yeah. Beloved, stop thinking that your situation is the worst. Stop branding your problem that is the last of all the problems. If you knew what your neighbor is going through, if you knew what people are smiling are going through, you would say yourself, hey, mine is little. Hallelujah. If people here can tell you what they are going through, the situation they are going through, the pain, the, you know, the, the difficulties they are going through, but they are still coming and singing. You know, there are people when they are singing, they see that he's having a problem. Even when he's, he's here, he's an MC, you can see that they're even the way he's standing. Brother, let just worship the Lord. <laughs> Let's worship the Lord. We want to show everybody that they have a problem so much. You don't know those who are singing and jumping what they're going through. Amen. Until they'll tell you and you say, oh, mine is little. Beloved, praise God. Thank God. Be grateful to the Lord. Even if you're going through pain, do not be focused on the pain that you're going through. Tell yourself, uh, probably there is somebody who's going worse than me. Amen. Let me thank God with the little one I'm going through. Amen. And by the way, whatever God allows in your life, it is because he knows that you are being able to handle it. Amen. God is a good father. Amen. He will never allow something that you cannot handle. Amen. If he knew that you won't handle what you're going through today, you wouldn't allow it. Don't cry, tell God, I'm going to die. God, tell, tell him, God, I thank you because if you allowed it, you would have given me the capacity to go through it. Amen. He have allowed the cross because he knew that Jesus will overcome the cross. Amen. Whatever you're going through, God allows it because you will go through them and you will overcome it. No matter how painful it is, no matter how difficult it is, uh, focus on the Lord. Be grateful to the Father. I thank you. This one is difficult, but I know you have allowed me to go through. I will overcome it. Amen. If you go with that attitude, you will make it. Amen. If you go already defeated, you will be defeated. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Amen. People are no longer faithful. I mean, they're no longer thankful to the Lord because. They have chosen to believe in the lies of the enemy, in the lies of their situation, instead of choosing in the promises of God. Amen. The promises of God are there and they are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. Amen. Your situation, my situation, can be completely opposite from what God says. Mm. But you must choose to believe what God says. Amen. Because what God says will happen no matter what. Your problem can be difficult. Your situation can be against what God has said. But remember, your situation will obey to the word of God. It will obey the word of God. It will obey the word of God. So when you're going through adversity, the Bible says there will, not, there will never be in your family barren woman, and then you are suffering barrenness. Don't believe in that barrenness. Believe in what the Bible says. Amen. Because what the Bible says is the truth. Amen. And what the Bible says will come to happen. Amen. Because God is faithful. He's behind his word to make sure that each and every one of them come to, to pass. Don't focus. Don't choose to believe the lies of the enemy. The lies of your body. Choose to believe what God says. Be grateful to the Lord. Be grateful. Be grateful to people that are doing you good. Be grateful to your father. Be grateful to say thank you. Amen. <clears throat> Don't say thank you when people ask you, oh, I give you the ah, you, you also. Oh, thank you. <laughs> that is not a good thank you. A good thank you must come by and manage from your Holy Spirit. You say, I am grateful. When your wife has given you a nice meal and you finish to eat, say thank you. There are husbands who are suffering. The, the, the ladies that don't know how to cook. 
you have one who knows how to cook. After eating the food, say, honey, thank you for the food. Yeah. When the children have done something good, thank you, my children. When your father has done something, thank you, my father. When a friend has done something to you, thank him. Do not be bossy and thinking that you all know everything. You deserve what is happening to you. You deserve nothing. Yes. The only thing that you deserve is the wage of your sin, which is death. Yeah. That's the only thing that you deserve. The rest, that is just coming from God. Yeah. Be grateful. Yeah. Are you grateful? Yeah. Are you grateful? Yeah. I'm going to read quickly, and I'm going to finish a few scriptures here just to motivate you to be grateful to the Lord. Psalm 107, verse 21. And Psalm 106, verse 1. Psalm 107, verse 21. And Psalm 106, verse 1. And Psalm 28, verse 7. Let's just read it. I'm not going to comment. And Hebrews chapter 12. 28, 29. Give, the, give us this one. Look this. The Bible said, <coughs> Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deed for mankind. You are the mankind. Let's be grateful to the Lord for his unfailing love. The love of the Lord will never fail. I said, I'm not going to. Comment. Give us 106 verse 1. 106 verse 1. Read those beautiful scriptures. Those scriptures should put them in yourself for you to be thankful to the Lord. If you cannot see anything to thank God in your life, say, Lord, I thank you for your failing love. Because your love toward me will never fail. I thank you for all the good deeds to the mankind. You, to the mankind, God give the sun. To the mankind, God give, give the rain. To the mankind, God give food. To the mankind, look at you remember what has happened to Tikish? You remember? Actually, we are now in 20... 45,000 dead. 45,000 people like Tikish. It's like the whole Russian bear is gone. Imagine. Imagine, guys. What did people have done? What? Would you... What, what do you think that you are better than them? That earthquake can also happen here. Do you know that under us and there is nothing under there? There's nothing. I went underground. You guys went underground almost every day. I went there underground. Nothing. Just street inside. So, brrr. Check 
citizen, even the terrorists, before they attack you, they think twice. Because they know here, if you attack this guy, the represent can be very dangerous. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. The represent can be dangerous. So even when the devil is about to attack you, it, it just like that. This one is a member of the unshakable kingdom. Hallelujah. If I try him, when his father will come back, I'll be in trouble. Yeah. So the devil will think twice. Witchcraft will think twice. But if they know you are coming to church, but you don't belong to the kingdom. Because the people are coming to church, but they don't belong to the kingdom. I, I believe you are coming here, you belong to the kingdom. Yeah. You are not just coming, but you belong to the, the kingdom. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So you belong to the unshakable kingdom. So this is the reason for you to be grateful to the Lord. Beloved, are you grateful to the Lord? Amen. Are you grateful to the living God? Amen. Are you grateful to God for all his goodness? Amen. Or are you just complaining, crying, you know, talking bad about God, talking bad about his servant? I went to this church, I did not get anything. I went to that, I did not get anything. No, there are things that you got. You being alive is something that you got. You being uh, 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 the way you are is something that you got. You have many things that you can be grateful to the Lord. Can you please rise up on your feet? Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks because it's given. Jesus Christ, His Son. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because He's given. Jesus Christ, His Son. Oh Lord, 
has built my life. Thank you, Jesus, for things that I don't have. I thank you for what I don't have. But I thank you for what I don't have yet, oh Lord. Because I know by your grace I will get there. I thank you, Lord, for helping me to know you. What a privilege to know you. What a privilege to know you. Forgive me for being a complainant. I've been complaining about everything. Forgetting that you've done so much for me. Tell him, Lord, forgive me for every time I complain. For every time I was not happy with what I had. I started now confessing. I started now looking at what other people had. And it produced jealousy in me. It produced envy in me. Anger. Tell him, Lord, forgive me for all those times. Speak to God. Father, forgive me. For every time I was complaining. For every time I complained before you. You don't like to murmur us and complain us. Father, forgive me. Forgive the church. Forgive us, O oh Lord. For every time we've been complaining. We've been complaining, O oh Father. Oh, yeah, we go forgive us, O oh Jesus. Forgive us for every time we think that we deserve better than our brothers. We thought that we deserve better than our sisters. We thought that we deserve better than those who are close to us. Forgive us for every time we've been motivated by envy. And envy produces jealousy. And jealousy produces anger in us. Forgive us for every time we're not content with what we have. We're not satisfied with what we have. Our eyes and our heart were always in the house of others. Lord, have mercy. Forgive us, O Lord. Forgive us. We confess people's feet. We confess people's belongings. Lord, we sin against you. Forgive us. Now I want you to pray, God. Tell the Lord, teach me to be content with what I have. Tell the Lord, teach me to be happy with what I have. Before me, to look for something better. Tell the Lord, help me to be happy and to be content with what I have. Speak to God. Lord, Teach us contentment. Teach us to be happy with what you already have. Before us, O Lord, to aspirate for the bigger one. Teach us to be happy, to be content with what we have. Help me, Lord, to be content with what I have. Help me, Lord. Let's pray together. Say this after me, Lord Jesus. Forgive me. For every time that I complain, I did not count all the good that you have already done in my life. Father, forgive me. From today, I will not complain anymore. But I will give you praise. I will be grateful for everything that I already have. For everything I've been through, good and evil, because all of them are working for my good. Thank you, Jesus, for salvation, for the kingdom, for your promises, and for life that I have this morning. In Jesus' mighty name. Give Jesus a lot of applause.